Today, we open my book, Eating an Elephant, Write Your Life One Bite at a Time, and we are going to look for what we can find. We are going to flip through the 200 bites in here and land on bite number 120 called Just a Few Scribbles. Hi, my name is Patricia Chapontier, and welcome to episode 60 of the Life Writers blog, where you can find inspiration and useful tips to help you write your life stories. In bite number 120, I encourage you to include some of your handwriting with the collection of stories you're writing. Why, you might ask? Our handwriting is one of the most personal and identifying traits we have. Your handwriting is unique. I could recognize my mother's handwriting anywhere. To add handwriting into your stories, you don't need beautiful cursive handwriting. It just has to be your handwriting because those you love will appreciate seeing it. I have an old bug eaten ledger my grandmother wrote in that I treasure because it's in her handwriting. She used it to log her bingo winnings, her monthly house payments of $38.50, payments for the only home she and my grandfather ever owned, and then payments of $10 she made against the $1,000 loan. What that loan was for, I have no idea. But in the midst of all the numbers, she sometimes felt inspired to jot down something she wanted to remember. She put in dates of births and deaths, hospitalizations when hurricanes hit South Louisiana. But every now and then, she threw in a little gem. One was, bought my new dust mop, August 1968 extra mop without handle. So two hands. Another one was started air conditioning, July 25th, 1968. Put new curtain in my kitchen, April 20th, 1968. The information is great and I love those little bits, but to see it in my grandmother's handwriting is priceless. In her loopy B's and P's and R's, I see traces of my mother's handwriting and my own handwriting as well. So look for places you can insert a bit of your handwriting into your stories. Maybe handwrite a dedication if you're compiling a collection of stories. Include an image of a journal entry or a handwritten letter. Maybe handwrite a P.S. at the end of a story. Think about what you might include as a handwriting sample in one of your stories or the collection you're putting together. Do you have something a parent, grandparent, or an ancestor wrote by hand? What is it that's written by hand that stands out to you if you do have writing from a relative? How do you feel about having this handwritten item? Do you plan to include some of your handwriting? Tell us about it in the comments section below. And remember, the only way to do this wrong is to not do it at all. If you liked what you just watched, sign up to be notified of future vlog posts and upcoming events. Use the buttons down below to share this episode on social media or with a friend who might enjoy it. Until next time, everyone, happy writing. If you enjoyed this week's episode, you will love our Life Writers membership. Whether you don't know where to start writing your life stories, have started and stopped many times, or have been writing but want to receive feedback to make your stories better, the Life Writers membership is where you need to be. We have a Get Started Roadmap, an extensive library of instructional videos, live events via Zoom, and a supportive and active community. If you want to take the stories that live in your heart and mind and put them onto the page, check out Life Writers at lifewriters.us.